You can even tell when some of my content has come from my thinking brain versus when it's felt more organic and from my, you know, highest self, my wise inner woman. Uh, And so I want to talk about how to connect with that and tell you the biggest way I do it is to be in silence. And if you have ADHD, you might be like, ah, not silence. I can't do silence. Nothing is ever silent. My brain is always going. And I get it. Like, I get our brains are always going, right? Uh, that's the hyperactivity part of ADHD. Even if you don't have physical hyperactivity where you're fidgeting and need to move more uh, physically, you do have, likely have, the brain hyperactivity where our thoughts are going and they're going quickly. But the thing is, we need space for those deeper thoughts. Hi, I'm Jen Barnes, and you're about to experience how to ditch the old ways of doing things, embrace your neurodivergence, learn tips and tricks to function optimally, and love yourself, neurodivergence and all. Welcome to the Self-Loved Woman Podcast. Hey, it's Jen. Welcome to the Self-Loved Woman Way Podcast, a podcast just for the ADHD woman entrepreneur. Today, we're actually going to talk about something very specific to entrepreneurship, and I want to give it an ADHD spin, Um, something very important to having, especially an online business, but really any business nowadays is getting traffic, right? Like traffic in the door. And especially with online businesses, traffic is often done through content, right? Creating content and whether that's videos or memes or images or quotes, whatever kind of social media posts, reels, all of that, even podcasts, right? We have to get our information out there. We have to get our content out there. And why? So why do we need content? If you're new to entrepreneurship, which some of us are, we need content so that people understand, first of all, we want to help people, right? Like we want to help as many people as possible. But we also want to share content so people understand what it is we do and how it is we can help them, right? And some people will be helped just by the free content that we offer, like this podcast or a social media post or some kind of other freebie that we put out, like a PDF or a workshop, maybe a live event. And some people will want to work with us more deeply to see the results that we're talking about. Because a lot of times, you know, I think we can, we all know this, right? Like we can do a million freebies of something and sometimes we just need someone to guide us through it. And with ADHD, we need someone even there for accountability, right? Content is a way not only to help more people, including people who aren't ready to buy at this time or, you know, our program isn't right for them. So we can help them through free content, but also a way to, share more about how we help so people get to know us better, right? And see like, is this someone I want to work with more deeply? So a problem that can come up for entrepreneurs is that we sometimes get into a content desert where we're like, I don't know what I'm going to share. I don't know what to post. Have you ever noticed that? You're just like, oh my gosh. And this happened to me recently, like a week week or so ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to talk about in my podcast? Like I just couldn't figure it out leading the day leading up to it. I was like, ah, tomorrow's recording day. I have no idea. And so I relied on some of the tools I have. I was like, okay, well, if I don't come up with it by morning, then I'm going to sit in the silence, right? So uh, today, first, before I dig in, we're going to talk about four ways that can help us figure out original meaningful content that comes really from our deepest, highest self, right? Because we want our content to be original. We want it to come from our own deep wisdom and experience. And, you know, the way to do that is by pulling back. A lot of times you can tell if content is coming from someone's thinking brain because it kind of lands, but you don't read it and go, oh yeah, that was meant for me. You can even tell when some of my content has come from my thinking brain versus when it's felt more organic and from my, you know, highest self, my wise inner woman. Uh, And so I want to talk about how to connect with that and tell you the biggest way I do it is to be in silence. And if you have ADHD, you might be like, "Ah, silence. 
silence. I can't do silence. Nothing is ever silent. My brain is always going and I get it. Like I get our brains are always going, right? Uh, That's the hyperactivity part of ADHD. Even if you don't have physical hyperactivity where you're fidgeting and need to move more uh, physically, you do have, likely have the brain hyperactivity where our thoughts are going and they're going quickly. But the thing is we need space for those deeper thoughts to rise up and we need to be able to spot them. And so being in silence can allow us to do that. And certainly we can sit in complete silence. We can put on some meditation music. We can sit in complete silence, maybe setting an intention like I want, you know, help me come up with a new podcast topic or help me, where does my next focus need to be with my audience? Letting that come up for us, right? Or we can do things like go on, set that same intention and go on a walk, Or like that night when I was having a hard time with my podcast, before I went to bed, I was like, okay, tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up with a clear vision of what my podcast needs to be. And I got this huge download and I was like, oh yeah, this is totally what we need to talk about. It was just like I knew. That was the one I did most recently on the stuff beneath procrastination, which probably resonated fairly deeply because it came from like my higher self, from that spirit wisdom that is in all of us versus just me thinking about things. And so There are lots of ways for us to access silence, whether we set an intention before we go to sleep, whether we sit in actual silence or like with quiet music or something like that, whether we go on a walk without a bunch of extra noise. There are lots of ways for us to be with silence. And when we do that, I recommend that afterwards we spend some time writing because that was step two of my went to bed and asked for ideas, I didn't actually have the idea right away. It was once I sat down and did my morning writing that it was the first thing that came off my pen. And so after you have given yourself some space in whatever kind of silence you found, stillness you found, it's important to take some time to write and just free write whatever comes up. Because sometimes you'll still be clearing the thinking thoughts. Like sometimes it'll just be, I don't want to say garbage, but like just not the deepest, most inner wisdom coming from you. But as you write, you'll find that emerges. And so whether, you know, it doesn't, I usually recommend sitting in silence at least five minutes, probably 10, you know, and then writing, then free writing or going for a 30 minute walk without a bunch of, you know, not listening to a podcast on your walk necessarily, but maybe you could listen to some music, but something that you're going to be able to still be processing, you know, hey, what's in there? What's inside for me to bring to my audience as something to help them? So that is one big way that I find most beneficial for coming up with content. Another one, though I got to say, this is maybe tied for most beneficial, is if you have existing clients listening to them. Notice, what are they struggling with? What problems are you seeing them present with? What actions are they taking that is like contributing to the problem or they're trying to help the problem and it's not working? Like, you know, they're coming by it. Honestly, it's not like you're going to slam anyone, right? There's compassion there. Like, oh yeah, I remember doing that, right? Because the problem is we might've been our audience at one point, But if we're helping people with something, chances are we're no longer struggling with those same things, at least not in the same ways. And so sometimes being able to sit with our current clients and listen to like how they're experiencing our program or how they're encountering their, you know, for me, what's coming up with their ADHD in their business and notice what is hard for them. What questions do they have? What limiting beliefs are showing up for them? Because all of that is content. All of that is stuff that you can share with people. And some of it you might choose to share inside of your program. And some of it you might choose to share as free content, right? Um, James Wedmore, one of the people I've worked with and still work with, has he said in one of his podcasts that the way we can kind of ascertain if something is you know, free content or actual content that that is in our program is free content. We want people to just be able to take it in, 
We don't want them to have to take notes. We don't want them to have to journal about it and all that. Whereas program related content is stuff where they're going to, you know, let it simmer. They're going to sift with it. There's actual activities and work to do. And so that can kind of help you figure out where some of that stuff goes, you know, and certainly if you notice a common problem with your audience, right? Like getting, for me, I noticed people struggling to get themselves to do stuff. And then I was noticing some of the underlying patterns, right? That's why that came up in, in that download overnight last week. What I was able to share the part of that, that should be free content. I mean, I want to say should be right, but like is better served to be free content and then can share the other pieces of it with the people in my program. And if you're like just here for the freebie and you're like, why don't you share everything for free? And to that, I'd say two things. One, I mean, I got to eat too. (laughs) You know, I need to make a living. And so doing everything for free isn't really a fair ask. But two, when people invest in something, when you invest in something, you are more likely to actually take the actions you need to take to follow through and do the work. A lot of times when we only take the free stuff, it only takes us so far, even if someone gave us their full program for free, because we don't value what we don't pay for. If we don't have skin in the game, if we're not, if we're not investing our time, our energy and our money into something, we're probably not even going to do it. You know, I signed up for this coaching program and it was like, I don't know, it was like $27 per class. Right. And I did like two or three episodes and I was like, yeah. I mean, first of all, it was like mediocre to me, I thought, as a content creator. Oh, gosh, this could have been so much more. (laughs) But also it was like I paid like 27 bucks and I was like, yeah, I don't really care. Right. Had I paid a few hundred dollars or maybe even a couple thousand dollars. Now I'm paying attention. Now I'm going to do it. But I'm also not going to invest at that level until I have a sense of like, is this someone who can help me? Again, the reason for our free content. Right is to help people see how we can help them. But also our paid content gives people an opportunity to really like commit to making a change because people who aren't willing to pay for something aren't really in that stage of change, that action stage of change where they're ready to do something, right? And if people are just in that contemplative or pre-contemplative stage of change, this comes from Prochaska and DiClemente. I wasn't planning on talking about this today, but I might as well. Um, If people are in those pre-contemplative stage of change or contemplative stage of change where they either really don't see they have a problem or like maybe they see a problem, but they don't think it has anything to do with them or contemplative is like maybe they see a problem, but they don't really know what to do about it or if they even can do anything about it or want to do anything about it. If people are in those stages, then they certainly aren't going to invest, but you don't want them to to invest because they're not ready to take action, right? And those aren't people we want in our programs because they're not ready. We don't want to take money from people who aren't ready to do the work. That's not aligned with integrity. And if you are someone who's aligned to, to do the work and you're like, yeah, Jen, but things are expensive. And to that, I would say, you know, expensive is all relative. And it's figuring out what you value, right? So that was a little bit of a digression, a little bit of a rabbit hole. But to come back to one of the ways we figure out what to share is we pay attention to the people that we're serving. And we share more deeply with them on what to do and guiding them more with, you know, perhaps small group coaching or one-to-one coaching, or maybe we tailor our content to them to be more expansive. But we can even share some of that in our free content, in our podcasts, in the PDFs that people can download, in a reel, (laughs) you know, or like little comments, like memes or whatever on social media. So paying attention to our audience is helpful. Another, or not our audience, sorry, paying attention to our clients is helpful. Another piece that's helpful is paying attention to our audience. So as an ADHD entrepreneur, I follow a lot of people with ADHD. They follow me. And some of it's just because it's like kind of fun to connect with other people who have ADHD. I'm not going to lie. It's like, oh, cool. We're all doing the same thing, right? But some of it is because other people with ADHD especially if they aren't doing what I'm doing, they are sharing what their struggles are. They're sharing what their wins are, but they're sharing what their struggles are, what their problems are. 
you know, you can see the mistakes that they're making and not like from a judgmental place, but it's like, a oh, here's a spot where I can help. I can, I have some ideas on how to help them with where they're stuck. And so if I share content about that, that might help people who also follow me, um, you know, and people who I'm following who tend to also follow me, right? But it can also help everyone else. And so if you are struggling with like, what content should I be doing? Take a look at what, you know, what people online are struggling with that are in your audience. Because a lot of times there's a lot of nuggets there. And that might take some deeper digging, right? I was in another program that recommended we take some time every week to sit and take in content, not to just like scroll, but rather to really take it in and see what's coming up for us as we read this. I had a really hard time doing that because with ADHD, I wasn't able to limit it to an hour. So when I did that, I found that I would be like, three hours later, still looking at content. And for a while, I could take it in and kind of keep notes and whatever. And then after a while, I was pretty much just like scrolling because the ADHD hits, right? I was like, oh yeah, I'm getting some dopamine off of this, right? But then you actually feel more drained after because dopamine hits aren't real, right? We think we get a dopamine hit, but what it actually does is decreases our dopamine baseline. And so there's, if you're wondering more about that, you can listen to Dr. Andrew Huberman, his podcast on dopamine talks about that in great depth (laughs) with all the neuroscience behind it. It's called the Huberman Lab podcast. But at any rate, that wasn't productive for me. So I find other ways to connect in with what's going on with my audience without it having to be a weekly thing where I get lost. So certainly looking at people in our audience and the problems that they're talking about, that they're posting about, and you can see the mistakes they're making. That's another one. The fourth one I'll talk about today is actually following other people who are in your niche and seeing what they're saying, not because you're going to say the same thing, but because it can help you start to reflect on what of what they're saying resonates And where are things that are missing that you would do differently, right? Like I follow lots of entrepreneurs, but they don't do things specifically for ADHD. And so I'm like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. But hmm, with ADHD, you'd have to do it this way, or you'd have to add this or do that, right? And so we can follow people with similar niches or the same niche. I never know how to say that word, (laughs) but either way, we can kind of see where, oh yeah, this is missing. Or maybe some of it is just like, yeah, that's not true, right? Like you'll see people all over um, social media talking about dopamine hits. And with ADHD, you just need your dopamine hit. I would actually argue that a dopamine hit is actually going to make you less productive because they only last for a very short amount of time. And then when it's done, Again, your dopamine baseline decreases so that your level of baseline dopamine is lower. So now you have less access to dopamine after a dopamine hit. And then you've got to re-increase your baseline. And that's just not factual information. And how do I know? I trust a neuroscientist. I trust Dr. Huberman because his stuff comes from like cutting edge neuroscience versus just what people are saying on the internet. (laughs) And so I'm like, okay, so this is something I can share that's unique that he talks about, but he doesn't have the same audience as me, right? So there's lots of ways that we can take in content, whether it, you know, it's people in our exact same niche, or maybe they're in parallel niches, or maybe like Dr. Huberman, he's just totally talking about neuroscience and sometimes talks about things that are completely relevant to what I'm talking about right? And so those are ways to find content as well. As all of this simmers, things kind of come to us. But I will tell you, those things are more likely to come to you if you're willing to be open, if you're willing to be receptive, and if you're willing to spend some way or some kind of time in relative stillness and silence. Again, you could be walking, Some people running does it, certainly taking a shower. I mean, you know, you probably can't take like three hour long showers or your water bill will be crazy, not to mention the environmental impact. As a neurodivergent person, I suspect you are equally sensitive as I am about that or possibly are, you know, but 
there are lots of ways that we get these downloads, but we have to stay open and receptive. And I got to tell you, we have to have a way to organize these downloads when they come to us. So for me, I always have a journal with me. I've got a little mini journal in my, like, I don't think you call them fanny packs anymore. It's like a crossover bag now, I think they call them. I don't know, but it's like the fanny pack that you wear this way, which by the way, I hope never goes out of style because that like keeps me from losing stuff. And it also keeps me from carrying too much crap. And it has been a savior for my shoulder. So I'm like, this is awesome, right? But anyway, I digress. But it, you know, having a little tiny mini journal in there. And then I tend to keep another journal around for that I do my work in silent when silence comes up or when I'm in session with my clients, I keep that the same journal by me so I can write down ideas from what they're saying of what I can share, right? I also, and this can get messy with ADHD. Some people like to have it all in one place. Me, I'm okay with multiple places because I'll tell you what I do with it in a minute. But I also have an app on my phone. It's called Evernote, which creates all these different notes. And then you can have a notebook. So I have a notebook just for content related to ADHD women entrepreneurs. And then I can have separate notes about different topics. So when the one for procrastination comes up, which that actually I ended up writing in a journal because that's where it, that's what I had access to. But had that come up, like when I was, I don't know, on my way to work, walking into work and it came up, I could have quick pulled up my Evernote app and went to a procrastination note or created a new one and then quickly wrote down what was coming up for me. So I make sure to come back to it because here's the thing. With ADHD, we're not going to remember. Plus, if you read Elizabeth Gilbert's book, oh my gosh, it's like, ah, it's something magic. I can't remember. I can't remember the title, but basically it's about creativity, right? And the magic of creativity. And one of the things that she talks about is how like creative sparks will land in us. And if we don't do anything with it, it will go to someone else for that creative idea to manifest. Rick Rubin talks about this in his book, oh my gosh, A Creative Way of Being, I think it is, where he talks about, you know, Rick Rubin, if you don't know him, he's a huge music producer. He produced people like, I think he did Run, DM, Run DMC, Beastie Boys. I mean, come on. I think he did like Slayer, <laughs> but then he also did like some big country stars and other like a couple pop stars. So he's a big deal. And so he wrote this book about creative creativity and how to be creative, how to access your creativity. And he talked about the same thing that Elizabeth Gil Gilbert did, which is like, it's just like these creative sparks will land on you. And if you quick grab it and you use it or you capture it somewhere to use it soon, then you put it out in the world. But a lot of times, if you don't do it, it will show up elsewhere. And I've personally had this experience where I had a really great idea for content and wrote it down. But a couple weeks later, I didn't get to it. And then I saw someone else had shared that exact same thing on social media, right? And Liz Gilbert talks about that. She had a book that she had this great idea for a book, but she wasn't didn't feel like the right time to write it. So she was going to sit on it. And then like a year later, someone else published that exact book, maybe two years, right? And so it was like, oh, that's where that idea went. And whether you believe that or not, either way, it's important for us to track the ideas that we have and then go back and look at them. So my solution to having these different places where I keep information is I also put it in my task app every Thursday, which is my content creation day to go check those places where I have content ideas. Because then it's like, oh yeah, okay, I'll make sure that I include this. So those are my four big ideas for creating content. There's so much more to say on this topic, certainly a ton about messaging, but I thought I'd just share this little bit today and see how it goes for you. So I'd love if you'd share in the, con in the comments how this landed for you. And if you're not following already, I'd love it if you would follow the Self Love Woman Way podcast, which is made just for you ADHD women entrepreneurs. And if you're not already, please share. All right, y'all. Take care. <music>